Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. Okay, so leverage, what is leverage? Well, leverage is the amount the firm has borrowed relative to the amount of finance provided by the owners of the firm. Now, remembering back to the first section of this module, the amount of finance contributed by the owners is summed up in the equity section of the balance sheet or statement of financial position. So we can get at this information by taking total equity. Again, remembering that the amount that the company has borrowed can, can be in two sections of the balance sheet. The first section is current uh, liabilities, where you can have current uh, loans and borrowings. And then usually the, the greater amount of loans and borrowings are in um, the non-current liabilities. Those are loans and borrowings that are due over the longer term, or at least due um, in more than 12 months. So using this kind of information, we can construct a measure of leverage. And the um, uh, measure that we use is called the debt equity ratio. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Before I talk about that, I will just talk about uh, equity and debt in general. Equity is the permanent capital of the firm. So when you contribute ep equity to a firm, you buy shares in a firm, you can't just take that money back out again. Uh, because you you know are unhappy with the firm or whatever, you just can't do that. You have to leave um, that money in, and it's only if the firm were to shut down or be liquidated that you could possibly uh, get that money back. The other way that you get the money back over time is through dividends. When the firm is doing well, it can pay dividends, um, and you actually get a check, or nowadays a bank transfer from the company, for the amount of dividends on uh, your shares in uh, the, the, the company. However, these dividends are at the discretion of the director. So the directors do not have to pay a dividend. They will pay a dividend when they think the firm is in a good financial situation and is able to pay a dividend. If the firm encounters some kind of financial difficulty, they will cut back down dividends. We saw this in all the airline stocks during the COVID crisis where you know, they were not going to use up their cash paying out dividends during that kind of uh, crisis. Equity is the least risky choice of financing from the firm's point of view. So it's good to have equity financing from a firm's point of view. Somebody's giving you money to run the business with and they're not able to take it back off you no matter what happens in the business. So this is a safer form of finance. Uh, from the firm's uh, point of view. Debt, so debt uh, it has to be repaid over a fixed schedule. When a firm borrows money from a bank or indeed a firm can borrow money directly from investors on, on an exchange, those are called bonds, um, uh, a repayment schedule is agreed. So it is very clear when you borrow money, when you must repay this money. Um, uh, well, there, there, there can be more complex type of arrangements, but in general, you say you're going to repay it over five years, or you're going to pay interest on it over five years and then repay the capital at the end of the five years or whatever. So there's some kind of arrangement in place that means that you are going to uh, have to repay um, the money that you have borrowed. Interest payments have to be met. They are a legal obligation. You've borrowed money. You say that you can repay the money plus interest. Um, you have to make these repayments. 
if you do not make these repayments, then the uh, lender generally has the right to, you know, put your company into uh, receivership or liquidation, or possibly you could apply for examinership. But in any case, this is not a good outcome. And um, the owners of the company, the equity holders, may lose the company if, if this happens, if they're not able to repay uh, their debts. Um, so um, it is a more risky form of finance from the firm's point of view because these debts uh, have to be met no matter what happens to the firm company, no matter what COVID or other unexpected events come along, they have to be able to meet these obligations. Debt does have an advantage in that interest is a tax deductible expense. So um, interest um, uh, interest rates are very low at the moment. So, you know, companies have a very low cost access to debt. But on top of that as well, they get a tax deduction for any um, interest that they pay. Um, and uh, this is obviously an advantage uh, for, for firms. So back to how we measure this then, how do we measure um, the um, uh, leverage of the company? Well, we measure it using the debt equity percentage. And this is quite a simple ratio. The top part of the ratio, we take uh, current loans and borrowings plus non-current loans and borrowings. So inside the square brackets here, uh, and that is the total debt of the company. Sometimes uh, in more realistic scenarios, we'll also include other things like leasing liabilities in here, but let's not worry about that. I don't think they occur in any of the, the problems that you encounter. And we divide then by total equity. And if we multiply by 100, we then get a percentage, uh, uh, which is um, the debt equity percentage. And what does that mean? It means um, uh, for every, you know, uh, one euro of equity that's been put in the firm, um, uh, it's been augmented by, you know, another, say, if it turned out to be 50%, another um, uh, uh, 0.5 there euro uh, in debt. So a 50% debt equity ratio would mean that you have borrowed another 50% beyond the equity uh, as is the financing of the firm. When we analyze equity, uh, our main concern is can the firm afford the interest payments and indeed, you know, for uh, the capital payments as well, can it pay the uh, um, debt back over time, over uh, the agreed time? Um, and um, we also use this, um, this measure called the interest cover ratio. And that takes the profit before finance costs divided by finance costs. And it gives you an answer in times. So it tells you that your profits are say five or six times interest, which means you know your profits would have to fall a lot before you wouldn't uh, be able to meet those uh, interest uh, payments. Why might people want to use debt? Uh, we've already seen that it, it, it makes the firm more risky from the owner's point of view. Why would you want to use it? Well, debt is a form of financial engineering in the debt can increase your return on investment. Um, the other side of that is it also hires the or increases the risk of the company. So let's see a little example that maybe illustrates how this works. Um, I'm going to use a, a, a ratio here called return on equity. Um, and return on equity is very simple. It is the profits um, after interest here of 100 divided by the equity of the firm, which is a thousand. So that gives you uh, 10% down here. So this is a, a firm. Uh, this is the original firm that I'm drawing the box around. Um, it makes profits of 100 every year and it has equity of 1000 and it has return on equity of 10%. All very simple. 
We're now going to look at two alternative situations. The first one is that the firm expands, it doubles its size, and it finances this for this expansion using equity. So um, that would mean that the profits would double to 200. Now we'd need more, you know, assets and all the rest of that to do that. So equity also doubles to 2000, or also doubles and ends up at 2000. And when we um, uh, take uh, profits over equity, we still get 10%. And that's because we have scaled up the firm, it's twice as big, but the, the, the financing uh, and the mechanics of how the firm works are the same. Uh, so we've just made it bigger without uh, disrupting the way um, the finances of the firms works. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the second one there. Now, supposing the f owners say, rather than um, use equity for this expansion, we're going to use debt. Well, what would happen then? Well, um, that gives us a more interesting answer. Uh, the firm would still double. We would still have uh, 200 euro of profits. Now, let's say there was a 5% interest rate and we borrowed 1,000 of debt, which is, you know, the extra money that we need to double the size of the firm. Well, then we'd have 50 euro of interest, which would mean that profit after interest was 150. Okay, so this is bad. Profit has gone down from the previous situation. However, the owners haven't provided any extra money they still have a thousand in equity which means that um, when we work out the return on equity uh, by dividing the profit after interest by the equity then we get 15 percent so we have boosted the return the owners can make on their investment in the company by using debt. And the reason this works is we are essentially using somebody else's money to um, finance the firm. We're paying the interest and we're getting to keep any extra profits that we generate after paying off uh, the interest. So I call this trading on the equity. Some textbooks call it that as well. It's, it's a very basic form of financial engineering which is to increase uh, the debt behind something and that also increases the returns. And you'll see it all over the place. I mean, you know, property developers do this all the time. They borrow lots of money in order to build a development, put actually very little of their own money into the development. And then as long as the development is successful, they get all the returns or most of the returns after they've paid uh, the interest off. The other side of it is that the company is now more risky. Uh, back here, um, we now have 50 euro of interest payments. And if we cannot meet those interest payments, then um, we'll, uh, you know, uh, we'll have a problem. The, the bank can, can, can move in on the company. So it has become more risky. And that is the other side of the equation. It's not money for nothing. Um, and this is a key principle in finance that there is a, a relationship between risk and return. And you can see it very directly here. So the question we have to ask generally when we're analyzing a firm is what's the right amount of debt for a particular firm? And the really key question here is can the firm repay the debt? Um, there's no point taking on debt that is going to be too much for the firm. That's going to overwhelm the firm's finances. They're not going to be able to repay it. And then they're going to get into all kinds of difficulty and possibly go into bankruptcy or liquidation. So the key factors are the stability of profits and cash flow. If a firm is going to take on a lot of debt, it should have a stable, um, uh, you know, a stable history of profits and cash flow. You should be able to see in the past that every year it's able to generate uh, so much uh, uh, profits and cash flow. That it's not one of these firms that's you know has a good year and then a really horrible year and another good year and a horrible year. That there's a stability to the firm's finances that will enable it to repay um, uh, the debt. And I guess related to that is the riskiness of the business. So. What kind of business are we in? 
Uh, is it the kind of business that provides stable returns or is it the kind of business that uh, possibly, um, uh, you know, does not, uh, is, is up and down all the time and um, uh, it deals with risky products that people might might stop buying or whatever and then the firm would be left with a pile of debt um, without any way of paying it back. I guess industries like oil exploration and maybe startup airlines and, um, uh, you know, highly innovative uh, products and things like that, um, they cater- they're they highly risky and they you would probably be better financing those kind of ventures with equity than with debt. Anyway, you wouldn't get debt. People, banks would not think that those kind of uh, businesses were suitable for high levels of debt. Suitability of the firm's assets as collateral or security. So when you go looking for a bank loan, people are going to look for collateral or security. So they're going to look for some assets that they can base um, the, the bank loan on. And if you got into difficulty, they'd be able to take those assets and sell them off and, and get some money back on, on the debt. If you're not in the kind of business that has a lot of valuable assets as part of the business, then it's going to be a lot more difficult to uh, take on uh, debt. I mean, things like consultancy firms, they only have, they're very asset light. They have desks and tables and maybe an office building. Um, and uh, that's it. Uh, they don't have anything else. Uh, so um, they're not the kind of businesses generally that take on a lot of, of debt. And we always have to remember then that there is the ability to raise the returns to shareholders by trading on the equity and and that can be um, very beneficial for shareholders. And in fact, you know, um, companies really are, are forced to do this. Um, if you have a company that has very little debt and yet has stable returns and, you know, is in a stable business, then people will ask the questions, why can't we raise the return? It's not really putting a lot of risk on the business. And if if the management don't want to do that, then sometimes what, what happens is and what's called an active investor steps in and tries to, you know, take the firm over and in fact increase the debt themselves. And in that way, they can make money um, as the value of the firm increases uh, when the returns go up, but risks don't really go up uh, very much. Okay, so those are all the factors to consider when you're looking at a company and trying to decide whether uh, the level of debt that it has is appropriate uh, for that particular business or not. Thank you for your attention. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.